Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 6th, and we are in the AM Devo with me, Bo O, in 1 Peter chapter 1. So we start a new book today, another book. Can you believe it? Uh, we've gotten through quite a bit of the New Testament um, already, uh, excluding the Gospels, of course, because those are some pretty good-sized books. Um, so I thought 1 Peter would be great. It's kind of a book that has some really cool references to the book of Hebrews. Um, so it might be easy for uh, the transition to, to kind of move forward. Um, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation in this Devo, I think, because um, it's from Tyndale House. Um, and Tyndale was an awesome guy. If you could read about him back in the 1500s, how he desired everybody to have a Bible in English. And that was his goal in life. And he was persecuted by the church. Um, yeah. Didn't that sound odd? Yeah. Interesting. But that's for another story. Hey, you're in for the morning Devo. And so let's get into it. Okay. So this is how First Peter starts. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more grace and peace. And I kind of like that translation. It kind of just puts it down right, the cookies right on the table, don't it? Um, I just love that kind of really clear presentation that it gives. Um, and I love the idea just this morning that God knew you and chose you long ago. Uh, I, I've been in God's mind for a long time. And his spirit has made me holy. So I've become whole by his spirit. And it says that as a result of that work of his spirit that has made me whole, it's something that he has made me. I want you to see that, that his spirit has made you holy. You haven't made yourself holy per se, but he has made you holy. And I kind of thank God for that, right? I really thank God that it's his work for me um, that makes me whole. And even with all of our defects, right? We can always rely on his spirit that makes us whole in life. And we can focus on that every day, that, Lord, it's your spirit that makes me whole. Nothing else is going to make me whole. And that's what Peter's going to get at in this book is, you know, stay with Christ. You know, his spirit is what makes you whole. Nothing else will. And so as a result, it says, as a result of that work, you have obeyed him. You have come to Christ. He is now your Lord or your master. And you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember that idea of being cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ from the book of Hebrews, right? It's his blood that cleanses us. Um, just as the old uh, covenant with Moses, blood was shed. So in the new covenant, the life was given of Jesus and and he's given us our, his life, and he took our life upon himself. And so, you know, it says we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I love these past tense words, right? Cleansed. We have been made holy. Hey, no matter where you're at today, just remember what the word says about you. You know, what does it say about you? His spirit has made you holy. Amen to that. And that we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen to that too. I want to walk in that kind of idea that it's God's work that has completed me. Right? And so it says, uh, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. We've been born again by what? His great mercy. His spirit, right? His blood, his mercy. You getting the picture? 
that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Who raised Jesus? God raised him, right? It's the work of God in the life of the Son that gives us this wonderful confidence to be able to go, man, and stability. To go, hey, I'm okay. I'm okay because Christ says I'm okay. Um, and if the king says I'm okay, then I'm okay. Then I'm in the kingdom, you know. And it says, and we have a priceless inheritance. Now, he's going to touch on this because a lot, I think a lot of times, even back in that day, there's the pressure of us always to move towards things that give us comfort. And things that give us comfort, money can provide. And so he says we have a priceless inheritance. He's trying to give us something, right? Something that's priceless. Something that's even of greater value than what money can buy on the earth. It says, and he's going to get into this. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Isn't that great? Why is it a better inheritance that God, what God has for us? Because it's without change and decay. It's undefiled. And when you think of the word undefiled, for us that doesn't mean much, but to the Jewish person, when you were defiled, you could not come into the presence of God. You couldn't even come into the presence of people. Um, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. You had to go through uh, a ritual in order to be um, clean. And uh, that took days sometimes. So it says that we have something that's going that's uh, undefiled. Never, we're always going to be in the presence of God. Nothing, there's no, nothing that will defile us, right? We have a priceless inheritance that's kept in heaven for you. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you, undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Isn't that cool? Man, that's, that's nice to know. And through your faith, God is protecting you by the power, by his power. Whose power? His power. He's protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be received on the last day for all to see. So there's going to be a power that's going to, uh, we're going to witness. And it will be revealed as well there there will be a revelation of this incredible power of of God and uh that is a part of our salvation and i got to imagine what's being referred to is God this power um is going to be our the the power of overcoming death the resurrection power to be able to ha have a new body God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation. Isn't that great? God is protecting you. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. God's preserving you. Right? He's caring for you. Gosh, what beautiful emphasis on the work of God in our life. And hopefully this morning you're getting that. You're just going, hey, oh yeah, that's right. It's God's work in me. And I'm to trust that work. It says, which is ready to be revealed. This power is ready to be revealed. This salvation is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. There's going to be a time where everybody's going to be really clear about this incredible work of God in salvation and the power of God in salvation. And if there is any fuzziness to it now, it will be made clear uh, later. And... But for those that believe, we have we have the first fruits in us. We have this kind of bit of it. Uh, we see the power of it. Some of us have witnessed the protecting power of God and the power of God to overcome things. And we've seen those things happen uh, in, in times in our life. And we go, whoa, man, I just I can wait until there, uh, there's going to be something more. It's like we get this preview of coming attractions right now, but just wait right? Just wait of what it's going to be like in heaven, what it's going to be like to be in the presence of perfection, of infinity, right? And to have new eyes, to have new skin, to have, uh, to be able to uh, have new skin, to be able to experience the things that we are going to experience without any decay or change. And that's going to be great. 
Um, you know, you think about, you know, everything on this planet, you know, the things that are built so strong, right? Even they decay, even the pyramids decay and the big sphinx and, you know, everything that's built that's mighty is all going to come down. And you just always got to remember that, you know, that, hey, this is going to burn. That's going to decay. This is going to go out. Keep things in perspective, right? So it says, so be truly glad, right? Be truly glad. There's a reason to be glad today. And it's not uh, so much in us, maybe our the, the perfect health or the perfect this or the perfect that or the perfect house and all these things. But it's in the work of Christ for us for this incredible salvation which is to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Wow, this is going to be amazing. It sounds just like, you know, it sounds almost like a Cinderella thing, right? Where there's like a ballroom and everybody's kind of waiting for Cinderella to come out and boom, there's a revelation of beauty, you know, something awesome. And everybody's like, wow, you know. It, 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 it's, I get that kind of sense from the passage. So be truly glad, for there is wonderful joy ahead. Isn't that great? Wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on that day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So now he clears it up, right? Jesus will be revealed to the whole world and there will be a, uh, a revelation um, of that. Um, and, and it'll be the, the, the climax, if you will, of salvation. Not only our salvation, but also um, a change in the earth, the Bible says, and in the world, the universe. I mean, really radical stuff's going to take place. A, a massive alteration, if you will. And so uh, I always, you know, I'm not a new duds kind of guy. I'm not a guy who likes to go shopping. But a lot of people like to go shopping and get some new stuff. You know, can you imagine the new stuff we're going to get, man? It's going to be pretty radical. So how exciting is that? I mean, that's these are things to just p kind of pump you up. And for those that are scattered abroad, those that are aliens in the world, right? Foreigners in the world. Notice he said that at the beginning. You guys are foreigners, man. You're not from here. Even though they were from there, right? He says, man, you're not from there. You're from someplace better, someplace greater. You got an inheritance. It's not going to decay. It's not going to go away. So remember that when you go through a trial, man, you're just being refined like gold. That's what it is. Some of our trials are super difficult, man. It's over and over and over and over and over. Repeat, repeat, fall in a boat, you know, like it's just, it feels like it's super repetitive and, and it is. And, you know, we might make some progress, but remember that, uh, we're being refined. You know, God is doing a work. He's preparing us for that Christ to be revealed to the whole world, that moment that we will be with him and that will take place and there will be incredible rejoicing. It says you love him even though you have never seen him. That's so true. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Now, have you seen something in this? In this translation really pops out a word quite a bit. And it seems like it's talking about joy, right? Um, this is a wonderful joy ahead. Be truly glad. Um, though you do not know, uh, you don't see him now, you trust him and you rejoice, right? With inexpressible joy. Isn't that awesome? It's a lot of joy and glad and that kind of uh, thing going on here. Delighting. You know, what's your affections like for Jesus? You know, what a neat idea, right? Your affections for Jesus. You know, and, you know, that's a great, great question for you to ask today. What's your affection for Jesus like? Where do you get your ideas from Jesus? You know, I never w grew up liking Jesus too much. And uh, and I always didn't like, you know, Christianity. And 
And, you know, but I have to always look back and go, well, what did I get my, my thoughts of Jesus from? And did I get them from the Bible? Or did I get them from what other people said? And, and I look at my past and I go, it's from what other people said. And, and it wasn't until I started really looking into Jesus and reading about him, reading the eyewitness accounts and uh, those that hung out with him, those that knew people that hung out with him. And then I started going, whoa, man, this Jesus dude's pretty awesome. And uh, and fell in love with that person. And so I hope that you just come back to that first love of just having an affection for Jesus. Just enjoying Jesus. Just realizing how awesome Jesus is. And these people loved Christ. And though they never saw Christ, they were people that never saw Jesus. They might have been people, from of them, at, at the time of Pentecost, when... Uh, Peter preached the great sermon at Pentecost and people came to know Christ. It might be some of them that were maybe being persecuted, right? And being spread out over the area, the region. And they never saw Jesus Christ, but though they did not see him, now they trusted Jesus. They trusted, they rejoiced knowing Jesus. And uh, there's the promise of the reward, the salvation of your souls. Nothing's more precious than your soul. And Jesus told us that, hey, if God takes care of the, the lilies of the field, will he not much more take care of you? Aren't you much more precious than that? You know, and, and man, your soul is precious to the Lord. And so um, great start to First Peter. Um, there's, there's so much in this section, so beautiful, but hopefully the Devo, you get, you got some good gems out of there and just went, wow, you know, it's Jesus's work. It's God's work for me. You know, it's what he's done. He's made me whole. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to be glad in that. And that think of the future, that there is a wonderful joy that is promised ahead for those that have put their faith in Jesus Christ. And that when trials come, just know that there is trials that will come, but that there's a testing that's going on, a trial that's happening, and it's refining me. It's helping me learn how to lean on the Lord and how to trust my dad and your dad. And even though we haven't seen him, we love him. We're holding fast to the Lord in difficult times trusting that we know that there's going to be an amazing fruit that comes from it and we look forward to that complete salvation um, of our souls so man i'm excited to get into this book more because it is just a rich book like most of the like all the books man what did i say most books all the books you guys have a great day okay keep focused um and i i'm gonna work on that too okay bye-bye